Hey there, this is Mark from Mobile Diesel. I am finally done with this in-frame rebuild. I'm about to start it for its maiden break-in. Uh, it's important with generators when you start them up, you can't actually start them up like a regular motor because it goes into full throttle. That's what emergency backup fire pumps and generators do. So I finished last night, actually five in the morning I finished, but I have to, I had to come back because uh, I had to warm it up. So how is it warmed up? All backup systems have a, a, what's called a primer water pump and a water heater, and that's what this thing is. This one's 120 volts. Uh, usually they're around 120, some of them are 240. They're never 12 volts though. So um, it's been pumping all night, and now it's quite hot to the touch. It's hot in the manifold. They've got water running through the head. And um, now we're uh, good to go. I'm gonna crank it once without the cut off solenoid engaging such that um, I, I don't want it to ignite and there's any problems. I've already hand cranked the motor a couple of times to make sure there's no obstructions but that doesn't cover high RPM so that's the next step is disconnect the fuel rail and uh, just crank it and it'll, one it'll prime it, two if there's any mistakes done it won't hydro lock and bend a piston rod um, and then when we're good to go with that next thing is to prime it. Uh, I put this fuel primer on. Most modern motors will have this from the factory. This one did not, so I put a what's called a flap valve. It's not a check valve. Flap valve cracks open at a fraction of one inch of mercury. I, like literally you can do it with your inhaling with your lungs. It's, it's not supposed to crack open at 10 inches of mercury or something. It's not supposed to create a fuel obstruction. These are expensive, actually. They're fifty to seventy-five dollars. They use them on municipal buses when uh, they park them down hill, and the fuel tank's on the bottom. There's so much pressure for the fuel to run back to the tank because it's such a long run. And the way they resolve that is installing two of these guys. And then this is a universal fuel coupler. I'm going to leave this with the motor. So once I get the motor cranked over a few times, make sure there's no obstruction. Then I want crank it such that the oil pressure goes to the top. Um, that's important as well. I've got um, break-in loop grease on all the journals, but still I want oil pressure to hit. Then I reconnect this guy here, which is the cutoff solenoid. So it, right now it's in the cutoff, and I want it to stay in the cutoff while I crank. Then I pressurize it, and then I crank it over by hand. I mean with a trigger starter and have it go. Um, one thing, I, I might create another video, but uh, when I was rebuilding this, two of the rods were severely bent and they're in my shop, so I, I have to um, I have to actually grab those to show you, so I might have make another video. But this rod here, which is not bent at all, it actually failed. Um, so I had to order another rod, but it was the deck height of the pistons are supposed to be four one thousandths of an inch over the head surface and this was for piston number three and this was on the heavy water side but it did not have any damage to the piston or the sleeve like the other two which were severely bent and the rods uh, the sleeves were cracked open because the bent rod was shoved into the, uh, the skirt of the sleeve but this one was not but even though it, you can't see any damage, it did fail by two one thousandths of an inch, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's not worth taking a chance with such a big job. So I had ordered another one and put it on the number three piston. And um, next video, hopefully you'll see this thing running. Once it does run, you're supposed to idle it for 10 minutes, make sure there's no oil leaks or water leaks, and then you got to put it under load for an hour for proper break-in. So uh, it sounds excessive, but once the rings create a groove in the sleeve, there's no un there's no removing that groove. So they want it to run at full RPM, so the rings keep rotating the piston and it wears evenly. So that is it. I'm pretty excited about starting this beast up. It's been an interesting job. 
Uh, but since we, we're saving the hotel about a million dollars, not having to upgrade the rest of the hotel to match a new motor, which is the name of the game by making the old one work again. All right, thank you for watching.